Good morning. I'd like to welcome all of you to the Evergreen Baptist Church morning worship service Amen. here in Oakland, California. Amen. On this day, March the 14th, 2021. My name is Terry Ellis. I'm an associate minister of the house. And I'd like to open up with a scripture. Right. Romans, the seventh chapter. Romans 7, and as I like to do in Bible study, in the New Testament, Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, Acts, Romans. Romans, the seventh chapter, starting with the 14th verse. Romans 7 and 14. When you have it, say amen. amen. I hear you through the sound waves. Spirits are connecting. Romans 7 and 14, for we know that the law is spiritual, but I am carnal, sold under sin. For that which I do, I allow not. For what I would, that do I not. But what I hate, that do I. If then I do that which I would not, I consent unto the law that it is good. Now then, it is no more I that do it, but sin that dwelleth in me. For I know that in me that is in my flesh dwelleth no good thing. For to will is present with me, but how to perform that which is good I find not. For the good that I would, I do not, but the evil which I would not, that I do. Now if I do that I would not, it is no more I that do it, but sin that dwelleth in me. I find then a law, that when I would do good, evil is present with me. For I delight in the law of the Lord after the inward man, but I see another law in my members, warring against the law in my mind, bringing me into captivity to the law of sin, which is in my members. O wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me from this body of death? I thank God through Jesus Christ our Lord. So then, with the mind, I myself serve the law of God, but the flesh the law of sin. It's prayer time. During this time, during this pandemic, we've had a lot of sickness, we've had a lot of illnesses, and we've had a lot of deaths. I'd like to, at this time, uh, ask your prayers for Sister uh, Barbara Norfleet, who lost her sister, Sister Orr of New Jersey. Special prayer for the president of the Usher Board, Sister Berner Hatter, who just had surgery, and she's mending. Special prayers for Deacon and Nadine Woodfork uh, as they mend. We just uh, ask you, O oh God, for prayers for all of those that are out there. Special prayer for Deacon Thomas, who I understand is mending. We uh, just want to keep the Evergreen family especially in our prayers. Father God, in the mighty name of Jesus, we ask that you would be with us, lead us and guide us in the way that you would have us to go. As we toil, as we worship and serve you on this Sunday morning, it's daylight savings time, so some of us may still be asleep. But for those of us who are on fire, for those of us who have attended virtual Sunday school, Lord, we just thank you for your word. Your word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Your word will I hide in my heart that I will not sin against you, O oh God. We need your word, Lord, but the word without the spirit is dead. We need your Holy Spirit, Father God, to lead us and guide us in the way that you would have us to go. And Lord, we won't be so self-righteous. We won't be so perfect. We won't be so uh, simple not to thank you, Lord. Lord, you know what's on my mind. You know what's on my heart. You know it before I ask what you said in your word, ask, and it shall be given. Seek and ye shall find. Knock and the doors shall be opened. For whoever asks finds, and whoever seeks 
will find also, and whoever knocks it shall be opened. Thank you, Lord. We just come to you, Lord God, in the mighty name of your Son, Jesus Christ, who is our Lord and Savior, asking you to forgive us of our sins, for they are many, asking you to lead us and guide us even during these times, Lord. And as we see the light, perhaps at the end of the tunnel, as we come out of this pandemic, whether it's this year or next year, or whether we are stricken by it for longer than that. Lord, we know that you're more than able to lead us and guide us. We know that you're more than able to keep us, Lord. We ask that you would keep us from all hurt, harm, and danger. We ask that you would protect us, Lord, even these times, Lord, so that we can be safe, Lord, so that we can worship and praise your holy name. Yes, yes. Now, for the man that's going to bring your word today, yes. Reverend Dr. Robbins, Lord, touch his heart, Lord, touch his mind, Lord, help him to speak from you, Lord. Help him. There is a word from heaven, Lord. There is a God who sits high and look low. Lord, help me as we go along this day and for the rest of the week. We have a whole lot in store for us, Lord, because we're worshiping and praising you on Monday. We're worshiping and praising you on yes. Tuesday. We got Bible study on Wednesday, yes. and we're fasting and praying on Thursday. Then we're Sunday school on uh, teacher's meeting on Saturday and worship service and Sunday school on Sunday. So we're busy for you, Lord. We're working and we're toiling in your vineyard, Lord. We just ask that it would be pleasing to you, Lord. Not that our works are pleasing to you, Lord, but that our faith, Lord, because faith is what pleases you, Lord. And we just thank you right now, Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus, that you would be with us and lead us and guide us and give us a word from heaven and we will be careful to give you all of the glory and all of the praise. These are the blessings we ask in Jesus' name and for his sake. Amen.
Hallelujah. 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 God sees your sacrifices. God knows your pain. God understands. He's a deliverer. Sometimes that's all you can say is hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you for bringing us this far. Thank you for not letting us die in our sins. Thank you for being our God. Thank you for being our master. Thank you for being our leader. Thank you for allowing your Holy Spirit to rest, rule, and abide in our lives. We're just so thankful, God. We thank you, Lord. Right now, we say hallelujah. That's the highest praise. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Father God. Just something about uh, the voices of the anointed. It's something about deep down in your spirit when you're singing for God. It's something about when you're singing through pain. It's something about when you're singing through injury. Uh, Deacon Kelvin Alexander, when you uh, the uh, president of the choir, and I see he's on crutches, but he's worshiping and praising God. I see the pain, I see the spiritual side to all of this. I see the leadership under Deacon Roy Beal who comes in on Saturday to prepare the sanctuary. He's committed, he's devoted, he's dedicated, even when you're not seeing him. We thank the trustees who are here every Sunday. Sister Emma, we thank you and we love you. Deacon uh, Dennis Woodford, we thank you for carrying on the business of the church, even though Bishop Pinkert has transitioned on. He left in charge an able and capable staff to carry on the business of the church. So we thank God for it. We thank God for you. And I'd like to refer to uh, Dr. Rufus Robbins as one of the hardest working men in the ministry. He's always here at the church. He's always fixing a light. He's always turning a screw. He's always putting up a boundary of fence. He's always repairing something. And we just thank God for him. We thank God for his dedication. We thank God for his diligence. We thank God for his commitment. Even though he had surgery on last week, he's with us on this week. He was teaching and preaching on the line, the uh, Thursday fasting and prayer line. We want you evergreen members and those who are out there on the uh, airways and in the media to fast and pray with us as we embark to select the committee to select the next under shepherd of this house. The number is 518-351-9106. 518-351-9106. And we fast from 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. just drinking water. Now, if you have a medical condition or you aren't able to do it uh, for the 12 hours, uh, 12 hours is tough. Uh, go according to your uh, doctor or your physician. But uh, I grew up in the Baptist church. My experience was uh, unlike those of uh, other denominations where the children fasted and prayed, I didn't fast and pray much as a child. Uh, I had fixed in my mind that uh, if I didn't eat, I would get sick. <laughs> but God is more than able. He's more than able to keep us and I thank him for allowing me to participate in these last two Thursdays. And we look forward to doing two more. So I encourage you to please, 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. And at 6 p.m. we have a prayer meeting and all of us can participate in prayer. And there's something about praying after you fasted. You are depending on the power of God. And we just thank God for this opportunity. We're not going to take it for granted. And I don't want, I think that's it for the announcements. And any more announcements? Uh, no more announcements? Not at this time. Okay, the next voice we will hear is yes. a word from heaven from none other than Dr. Reverend Rufus Roberts. Amen.
I will bless the Lord at all times, and his praise shall continue to be in my mouth. Oh, magnify the Lord with me, and let us exalt his name together. Because again, uh, for those of you who tuned in through YouTube and Facebook Live, we are here this morning. We pray that you can glean something from our sermon today, that you'll be blessed by hearing the word of God. And like I said, uh, often we ask you to continue to pray for the Evergreen Baptist Church. We thank God for our choir this morning who are rendering the songs that may lift our spirit. And some of us are going through a lot of things throughout the course of a week, but God is still good. God is still good. And I know that last week uh, I went through my surgery for my eyes and I'm done much better today because I know God is good. And I put all my trust in him because he had brought me from a mighty long ways. And I don't believe he brought us here now to just keep us, to wipe us out. I think he got better things for all of us to do. So I give you praise and I give him thanks for all that he do. Bow your head with me as we go into a word of prayer. Eternal God, our Father, the Father of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the Father of our Lord and yes. Savior, yes, Lord. Jesus the Christ. Lord, as again, you have brought us to this moment in time, and we just say thank you. Thank you. We come to praise you, because you tell us when praises goes up, yes. we believe blessings will come down. Yes. And Lord, not only this church needs, but everyone needs you. Yes. So we praise you and we give you all that we have, yes. because all we have is what you've given us. We ask you to use it today as a vessel to bring forth a message that someone in the dark may see the light. We pray for forgiving me for all of my sin. And I pray you cleanse me from all of my righteousness. Then, Lord, I pray that you create me a clean heart, O oh God, and renew a right spirit within me. That I love you first, I keep your word, and we'll do all we can to love mankind. So let the words of my mouth. In the meditation of my heart. Be accepted in thy sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. This morning, I pray that you have your Bible with us when we attempt to go on the airway that some of you, or all of you, will stand in reverence of when we speak about God's word. So this morning, we'll be coming this morning from Acts, the 12th chapter. Acts the 12th chapter, and since we in prayer and fasting all week long, we thought it would be a good thing for you to come along with us and go along with us in prayer. So Acts the 12th chapter, start the first verse, and it reads as follows. I'm reading out of the New King James Version. It's now about that time, Herod the king stretched forth his hand to vex certain of the church. And he killed James, the brother of John, with the sword. And because he saw it pleased the Jews, he proceeded further to take Peter's also. Then were the days of the unleavened bread. Verse four, and when he had apprehended him, he put him in prison and delivered him to four quaternions or soldiers to keep him intending after Easter to bring him forth to the people. Verse 5, And Peter therefore was kept in prison, but prayer was made without ceasing of the church unto God for him. And when Herod would have brought him forth the same night, Peter was sleeping between two soldiers, bound with two chains, and the keeper before the door kept the prison. And behold, the angel of the Lord came upon him, and a light shining in the prison, and smote Peter on the side, and raised him up, saying, Arise up quickly. And his chains fell from his hand. And the angel said unto him, Gird thyself, and bind up thy sandals. So he did. And he said unto him, Cast thou thy garment about thee, and follow me. And he went out and followed him, and it was not that it was true which was done by the angel, but he thought he saw a vision. And when they were past the first and second war, they came into the iron gate and that leaded into the city, which opened to them of his own accord. And they went out and passed on through the streets, and forthwith the angel departed 
from him. Verse 11. And when Peter was coming to himself, he said, Now I know surely that the Lord has sent his angel and delivered me out of the hands of Herod and from all the expectation of the peoples of the Jews. Verse 12 is the verse we'll be concentrating on today. And when he had considered the things, he came to the house of Mary, the mother of John, whose surname was Mark, for many of them gathered together praying. Today I want to speak briefly about the power of prayer. Yes. The power of prayer. Amen. Power of prayer. Amen. It was when the church was young and infancy, and some of the people, brother Ellen, were still in the church who had seen the privilege to see Jesus with their own eyes. Yes. There was members of the church who could stand and testify about what really happened when Jesus fed the thousand, many hungry thousands. There were those in the church who was fortunate. Donna Pay, to see Jesus stunt the blood of the woman who had been sick for 12 young long years. There were those who had seen him give sight to the blind, make the lame to walk and the dumb to talk. Many of these church members were there when Jesus hanged on an old rugged cross and heard him sigh with his last breath, Father, into thy hand I commend my spirit. Some of the church members were still breaking bread together and having fellowship with one another. <clears throat> but this being the first church, it was doubtful that the first hypocrite was there. The first liar, the first adulterer, the first fornicator had yet joined the church. This was a church on every choir road, there was a born again singer. Behind every bag, there was a humble servant who was glad to be a doorkeeper in the house of the Lord. The early church was a church where nobody was glamoring for office. Nobody had the big head. Nobody was looking for his own glory. In this church, nobody was mad. No cursing and no fussing. There was no little church within the big church. This was a church where nobody talked and bragged about what they had or what they knew. No one criticized and no one complained. No one was grumbling, nobody was touchy and grouchy and walked around rather given with a chip on their shoulder. In the church, in this early church, there was no backsliders. There was no hypocrite, there was no turncoat. There was no double tongued and no gospel, no busybody, no home records and no peace breaker. No envy, no hate, no strife, no jealousy. This was a church where it was free Sister Thomas to go out and make disciples of the lost. Everybody was telling somebody about somebody who can save everybody. And how glamorous it would be today if our church could follow the first church example. Here at Evergreen, we could turn the world upside down. We could turn the world in the right direction if we was on one accord. According to our text today, Herod was the king of Judea. At this time, all the church enemy was on the outside of the church. Being the enemy of the church, Herod, being the enemy of the church, stretched forth his hand against the leaders of the church. The Bible says James, the pastor of the church, had already been killed. And Herod, what he had done, pleases the Jews. You know, some of us love that excitement. Sometimes we want to be entertained. For example, a short while ago, there was two women in the streets fighting in Oakland. We love to see blood. Instead of the crowd trying to break up the fight, they were urging another woman to kill her. She stabbed her. She ain't no good. And in the end, she killed her. Some of us love this, but this is not right. When a fire is burning someone's house down, we love to watch. We won't lend a helping hand if the fire started right here in the sanctuary today. I wonder how many of you will leave the sanctuary to go out just to be a spectator. 
Bullets are flying everywhere, but you want to watch. Herod then proceeded to get Peter. The Jews got a kick out of James' death, and Herod liked what he saw, Reverend Ellis, and therefore he was encouraged to take Peter's life. So Herod was an enemy of the church. The church was young, the church had enemies on the outside of the church, but today, the enemy is within the church. The drunk of the dope pushers, the gamblers, they don't come in here raising hell. But it rather the church members, the bench members, the choir members, the ushers, the deacons, the trustees, the preachers, and other members. You see, a ship can always stay on top of the water as long as the water is on the outside of the ship. But when the water starts sleeping into the ship, you got trouble and you're going down. You got trouble and you're going down. The reason the church is not powerful and strong as it used to be is because some water has got into the ship. Somewhere along the way, goats have mingled with the sheep and wheat has mingled with the tares. The church problem has come to the point where we don't have time to fulfill our calling. The mandate of the church is to make disciples and take the gospel to every creature. We don't have time to go into the highways and hedges and byways and compel them to come. We don't have time to be soul winning. We don't have time to reach out into the community to seek and to save that which was lost. The poverty stricken, the orphan, the widows, the less fortunate. We don't have time now because the church spent most of its time doing house cleaning, trying to get itself straightened out. And when we get through fussing and fighting here, we don't have the energy to reach out and be that beacon for those in a dark world. You see the church that deal with such trivial things as trying to see that everyone is speaking to each other. Ushers ushering together and choirs singing together and deacon deacon together. The early church had this enemy on the outside but today our enemy is on the inside and outside. So Herod, being an enemy of the church, raised his hand against the church. And after James had been killed, the Jews were pleased. Herod decided to kill Peter. One Sunday morning, as Passover, Peter was preaching. Sixteen soldiers ran and took him away from his pulpit and took him to jail. These 16 soldiers walked past the ushers. They passed the congregation. They passed the mother's board. They passed the deacon board. They passed the trustee. They passed the missionary. They passed the associate ministers. And they came into the pulpit and handcuffed Pastor Pete. The disturbing things about this tragic occurrence, it happened in the house of the Lord. Nobody lifted one finger to stop them. I had any question why these soldiers are here. It's hard for us to imagine that a church would sit still and see its pastor dragged away. Come on, Herod. See how far you can get in here with your soldiers. If you're in the building today, would you say so? Come on, Satan. If you're here this morning, would you answer the road? If you're here this morning, someone brought you here. Whatever the devil lifts up his ugly face, especially in the church, he may start in any committee. Yes, but his ultimate gain, aim is the pulpit. If he can get the pulpit and get the shepherd, the sheep will be scattered. If he can just get to the pulpit, there will be no washing on the wall who can tell Israel what time is it. If Herod or Satan can get to the pulpit, the choir has nothing to sing about. The deacons have nothing to pray about. The mission and ushers have no duty. No duty because the devil get to the pulpit is all over. Satan, how far have you gotten? If you're here this morning, say present. Don't be sneaking around. Stop throwing rocks. You, you're chicken. If you're here, say so. So I say what each of you need this morning. If Satan or Herod is in your group, stop him right there. Squash him right there. Don't let him get to the pulpit, Brother Gibbon. So these 16 soldiers came into the church and took Pastor Peter 
and locked him in jail. And when the news got around that Peter was in jail, some thought it was funny that Pastor was in jail. I can't imagine that some of them were saying, child, it's a shame that these soldiers had to come here and take our pastor away. It is awful that our service had to be disrupted like this. He must have done something that he didn't have no business doing. And if you ask me, we need a new pastor. But when things go wrong in the church, a new pastor is not always a solution. When Peter got arrested, some of the members down in favor again to suggest perhaps we, what we need is a comfort. And a petition ran and began to circulate. And when the time of the evening service, the house was packed. Those who have been away for a year or two, those who had joined another religious group, members you haven't seen in ages want the boys their opinion. And just as ready they got to call the house to order to announce the conference, a woman in the church stood up. We don't know what office she held in the church. We don't know what auxiliary she belonged to. All we know about her name is Mary. And don't get this Mary mixed up with other Marys of the Bible. She was the mother of John, so we won't get this John confused with the other John of the Bible. The Bible says she was the mother of John, whose surname was Mark. So it's safe for me to say today that Sister Mary Mark stood up. And when she got up, she announced to the church, Wednesday night at my house, there will be a prayer meeting. Sister Mary said to her brothers and sisters, and all of you invited to come to my house and pray. There were some who will come just to spread this part. But thanks be to God to those who have been born again and full of the Holy Ghost. When trouble comes, when trouble comes into the church, instead of a church conference, our business meeting, we should have a prayer meeting. Mary said to her constituent, she said, brothers and sisters of the church, on Wednesday night, down at my house, we shall be in prayer for the pastor. You don't have to come down here confessing your sins and all that other stuff. We're just going to have a prayer meeting. There are those of you who think that you're a healer. There will be no healing tonight. We're just going to have a prayer meeting. Wednesday night, we're going to be in prayer for the pastor. So I want to stop and pause there for a moment. The leadership of our church decides that we're going to pray and fast. We need a prayer meeting. We need to be in serious prayer for a pulpit committee. That's what it's all about. When we are together, together we stand and divided we fall. But when we want one accord, touching and agreeing, God said he will be in the midst. So Mary said, Wednesday night, we are going to be in prayer for the pastor. I don't want anybody down here speaking in tongues. We are going to have a prayer meeting. Mary said, at my house on Wednesday night, nobody will be laying hands on folks. No pools, no circuit. If you want to get healed, go to Kaiser. Go to Summit. Go to Alpha Bay. Go to Highland. Go to the rest home. But on Wednesday night, we are going to have an old-fashioned prayer meeting. Nobody will be laying hands on nobody. All that stuff is in God's hand. We're just going to have a prayer meeting. So I want to tell you, Tuesday night is going to be a prayer meeting. Don't let no distraction run in. Don't let nothing come between you and that prayer. So Samaria said, we're just going to have a prayer meeting. And she said, you don't have to bring your prayer cloth. There will be no oil to sell. We're just going to have a prayer meeting. It's a shame how mixed up some of us have misplaced our spiritual values and become. Some of us won't give a dollar to the benevolent. But you'll spend a, a hundred dollars on a piece of rag or whatever, your hair, your nails, your eyelashes, and so forth. I'm wondering what type of prayer cloth that Daniel's had. What type of cloth did the three Hebrew boys have when they were in the fire is furnished. So Sister Mary said to the church at Jerusalem, with the night down in my house, since our pastor in jail, there will be a prayer meeting in the name of Jesus. And she said, in the name of Jesus, every knee must bow and every tongue must confess. She said, brothers and sisters, I don't care what activity you're involved in.
The church, every now and then, you better have a prayer meeting. Church, let me say it again. Every now and then, you better have a prayer meeting. A prayer meeting is the moment of the church. It tests the degree of how warm the people is. A prayer meeting is a barometer of the church. It points to showers of blessing or to a season of drought. A praying church is a prosperous church. A praying church is a God-fearing church. A praying church is a loving church. A praying church is mission-minded. However poor the viper, prayer can take this thing away. What is prayer? Prayer is the keys of the morning and the boat of the night. Prayer is a preparation for danger. It is the armor for battle. Prayer is the breath of the soul. Prayer leaps over barriers. It stops at no distance. It boxes at no obstacle. No matter how dark your night may become, or how dreary your day may be, the numerous disappointment, how rough your roads and how steep your hills and how high your mountain and how low your valley, I tell you this morning, prayer will see you through. It's the only weapon a child of God needs is prayer. Prayer moves the arm that moves the world. Prayer is a way that the soldier of the cross report for duty. A soldier of the cross must have a good prayer life. If you want to stay in contact with your God, Commander in chief, you must have a good prayer life. And if the world is ever again, Brother Gibb is going to get back on the road of life, the church first must get down on its knees and pray. Second Chronicles 7 14 says, If my people who are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then would I hear from heaven. I will forgive their sin and I will heal the land. The hour of power is the sweet hour of prayer. Sweet hour of prayer, sweet hour of prayer that calls me from a world of care and bid me at my father's throne and make all my wants and wishes known. For when you pray, you are saying to the Lord, pass me not, O gentle Savior, hear my humble cry. What is a humble cry? A humble cry is a soul sincere desire, unutterable or expressed. Sometimes our prayers are answered right away, and there are times as a courtesy we must wait on the Lord. It might be a few hours, it might be a few days, it might be a few weeks, it might be a few months, it might be a few years, sometimes it might be a lifetime. I heard someone say that he's always on time. Whatever and whatever way you pray, as long as your prayer is sincere from the heart, you can cry it, you can moan it, Reverend Ellis, you can groan it. Prayer is the simplest form of speech. You don't need a high school diploma, Brother Gibbard. You don't need a BA or MS degree. You may say, it is I, she's all, we am, you are, this there and that there. Prayer is not predicated on your words but it's really determined by your heart. If the church is going to stand in the day society, the church must have prayer and prayer warrior. Because of the prayers of the righteous, that bill is much. So it was that many members of the church in Jerusalem was having a conference, and that Wednesday night simultaneously there was a prayer meeting at Mary's house. And as we listen on what's going on at the conference, Brother Gibbard, I can hear them call the meeting to order. The clerk read the last minute of the last meeting. But way down the road at Mary's house is prayer time. Come on, let us listen and kneel in and pray. But just a little talk for a little while. So Mary greeted us with a warm welcome. She, as we looked around, there was a faithful few. There's always a faithful few. She, she's a faithful few at Sister Mary's house Brother Elbert, I can see you in the midst of the floor. And I see on that table there was hymn books and Bible. Sister Mary said, you at my house, I would just like to start this prayer off, this prayer meeting off by myself. We, are, we all know what we're here for. Pastor Peter's in jail. Before I go further, Donna Faye, I want you to help me sing my song. A child of God should never be without a son. A song seems like the day will never be over. 
Sister Mary said, I want you to help me sing my song. A charge to keep I have on God to glorify. Mary cared, cared nothing about the wrinkling of her dress. She bowed down on her knees and said, this evening our Heavenly Father, here's just a few of your handmade truth. Yeah. Has the render knees bent and body bowed one more time? Lord, it ain't but a few of us here. But you said in your word, we're two or three gathered together, touching and agreeing in your name. You will be in the midst. Yeah. So when Sister Mary got up, that old deacon came down to the table, Reverend Randy, and he said, I want somebody to help me sing my song. And he bowed and said, Father Abraham, Father Isaac, and Father Jacob, Lord, I stretch my hand to thee. No other help I know. If thou withdraw thyself from me, oh, whether should I go? Lord, you told me to call you. You are God who not only hears prayer, but you are God that has answered prayer. And when the deacon got up, one of the mission workers came down to the table, Donna Faye, and said, I haven't been here long. I just got saved. I just got born again a few years ago, but I want you to help me sing my song. And our song, well, what a friend we have in Jesus. All of our sins and grief to bear. What a privilege it is to carry everything to God in prayer. Oh, what peace we often forfeit. Oh, what needless pain we bear. All because we do not carry everything to God in prayer. Don't you see her get down on her knees saying, Lord, I don't know what word to use, but my pastor needs you now. Lord, please go down to the jailhouse tonight and have mercy on our pastor. And when she got up, that old preacher said, I want somebody to help me sing my song. Guide me, O oh, thy great Jehovah, pilgrim through this barren land. I am weak, but thou mighty. Hold me with your powerful hand. Bread of heaven, bread of heaven, feed me till I want no more. Lord, now you told our pastor to go. And he done what you told him to do. And Lord, if it be your will, please go down and see about him. Lord, I just want to thank you. Lord, I just want to thank you. And he said, thank you, Jesus. He said, hallelujah. Praise your holy name. And finally, the old mother of the church hobbled on her stick. Sister Alexander, and she said, well, I hadn't planned on saying nothing. But the night of business is at hand is serious. I want you to help me sing my song. That brought me every step of the way. It's amazing grace how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found. I was blind, but now I see. Through being in changes, dangerous toys and snares, I've already come. There was grace that brought me thus far. It'll be grace that lead me on. When I had my first heart attack, through many dangers, my first husband died. My second husband left me. Then I had to be a mother and a father to the children. Yeah. When I had my first stroke, when my arthritis and rheumatism paralyzed my bones, yeah. Lord, you remember the doctor came by my bedside yes, and he shook his head and told me there was nothing else that he could do for me. Oh Lord, it was your grace that brought me thus far. Oh Lord, you brought me from a mighty, mighty long ways. Now, Lord, I don't know, I don't believe that you're going to leave me now. So somebody here this morning can witness with me. Lord, I have brought you from a mighty long way. Somebody can say he's been in my room. Somebody can say he healed my body. Somebody can say blessing after blessing, just keep coming my way. And when the old mother finished praying, the Lord answered. The wheel of mercy began to take hold. The Lord heard the prayers of the church and the dispatching angel to go down where Pastor Peter was. And when you pray, God will answer. We believe that he's a right now God. You know that God hears our cry. Sometimes he said yes. Sometimes he said no. And other times he said wait. And all I can say, won't he do it? Won't he answer prayer? Have you ever answered your prayer? Somebody said, won't he? Yes, he will. He tells us, cast our cares upon him, 
Why? Because he cares for us. Prayer is a key, but faith unlocked the door. The church at Mary's house was praying without faith. Faith is the substance of things hoped for and evidence of things not seen. The Lord answered their prayer, but they didn't believe the Lord would. Many of you this morning, you pray all the time. But you don't believe that the Lord would answer your prayer. I don't believe that there's nothing too hard for God. He said, without faith, it's impossible to please him. He said in his word, whatever you need, ask and it shall be given. Seek and you shall find, knock, and it shall be open to you. Now, let me kind of close this message off. I, I don't want to bore you too long, but let me close it off. Have he done anything for you? If you've done anything for you, say yes. yes. Someone say he'll be a friend who stick closer than a brother. I tell you this morning, whatever you're going through, prayer will see you through. Yes. Nothing is too hard for the Lord. Sincere prayer, sincere prayer will make your husband treat you right. Sincere prayer will make your wife treat you right. Sincere prayer will make your children behave. Sincere prayer will make your enemy become your friend. I tell you this morning, prayer will see you through. Prayer changes things. Prayer will change condition. And prayer will change behavior. And prayer will change you. You can pray anywhere. You can pray anytime. You can pray if they punch your eyes out. You can pray. If they cut your tongue out, you can pray. I tell you this morning, prayer will see you through. At midnight, Paul and Silas prayed. Hezekiah turned his face to the wall and began to pray unto the Lord. Lord, have mercy on me. I tell you this morning church, God will answer your prayers if you got the faith. If you got the faith, somebody said God has the power. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. God answers my prayer. And when you ask him anything, not only he hears prayers, but he a prayer answering God. Paul said, I went to the Lord three times for the same thing. He said, oh Lord, please remove the thorn from my flesh. But God answered and said, my grace is sufficient. I tell you this morning, prayer will see you through. Prayer brought grandma through. Prayer brought grandpa through. And prayer will see you through. God always answers when you call him. Sometimes he answers yes, sometimes he's a no, and other times he's a wait. Sin got us in, but prayer will bring you out. Won't he do it, Brother Gibbon? Won't he do it, Brother Gibbon? I don't know, but I know he's all right. I know he's an all right God. Someone said he's a battle axe in the time of trouble. Someone said he's a heart fixer. Someone said he's a mind regulator. Someone said he's a doctor in a sick room. And I know he's able to make a way because he's a way maker. I don't know about you, but he healed me and I know he would do it. And I believe today he still has a prayer. He said, come and seek and save that we lost. He said, I came to show man the way. Someone said, he's little of the valley. Someone said, he's the rose of Sharon. Someone said, he's the bright and the morning star. Someone said, he's Alpha and Omega. He's the first and the last. He's beginning and the end. And I tell you this morning, he died. But on Sunday morning, he got up with all power. And I tell you, he's able today. Church, I see he's able. And when you pray, let him have his way. Tell him what you need. Tell him what you want. He's on the main line. And I believe you can call him. Call him. When you call him, I know he will answer. He need, we need his prayer. We need his blessing. We need his healing. So there's power. Wonder working power. In prayer. When you pray, pray right. Pray that God will. Pray that God can, and pray that God will come through. He come through all the time. He's on the main line, I say. Tell him what you want. Yeah. Power of prayer. God is able. He's more than able. He's able all the time. He's a right now God. Seek ye the Lord while he may be found. Call ye upon him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake his way.
and the unrighteous man his thoughts, and let him return unto the Lord, and he will have mercy upon him, yeah. and to our God, for he will abundantly pardon. Yeah. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, says the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, yeah. and my thoughts than your thoughts. Yeah. We just thank God for Reverend Dr. Rufus Robbins, yeah. inspiring us that the power of prayer, we can never get too big we can never go too far where God can't reach us. We can never be in too big of a bad of a situation. Is anything too hard for God? No, it's not. God is able, he's more than able to keep us. He's more than able to lead us and guide us even through this pandemic. So I want to encourage you that when, the, when they allow us to come back into the church and we feel like it's gonna be soon, we feel like it's going to be very soon, but you need to know that you have a savior. You have a deliverer. You have a forgiving God. He wants you to be a part of this congregation, those who are in this area. And for those who are out of the area, find you a Bible church, a church that speaks and believes the word of God and get in that church and work and serve God. Not because you're earning your way to heaven, but because God did it already. He already paid the price. And because you love him, you're worshiping him and you're serving him. I thank God for this message. I thank God for the power of prayer. And we believe in the power of prayer. We're constantly praying all the time, praying without ceasing. If I had a thousand tongues, I couldn't pray enough. Thank you, Lord Jesus. You need to know that prayer is a conversation with God. Bishop Pinker taught us that. If he didn't teach us anything else, he taught us to pray to God all the time. Pray without ceasing. He taught us to go down on our knees in prayer. When the church goes down on its knees in prayer, they say when the little girl called Rhoda, she's the one that went to the door to allow Peter to come in. And she, Peter was knocking on the door. She said, the master's at the door. They said he's in jail, but she heard him knocking at the door. God has already delivered you through your prayers. He's already made a way from the beginning of time to right now. He's made a way. He just wants you to approach it in faith, the power of prayer. God is good. God is good all the time. Don't have me to start going because I believe in God. I believe in prayer. And I believe that the church will not be denied if we go down on our knees in prayer. And we need to be on one accord. I don't know what's keeping God's people of this church from participating in prayer. But I rebuke you in the mighty name of Jesus. Satan, the devil is a liar. I rebuke you. There's more to hold us together than to divide us. I want to see in the mighty name of Jesus Christ that we will participate, that we will follow leadership. We have good order. In the absence of our bishop, the chairman of the deacon board is in charge. It's a good system, and he's calling on you to join this church in prayer. We need you. We need your prayers. Why? Because the effectual, fervent prayers of the righteous avail as much. I'm claiming victory in the mighty name of Jesus Christ right now, Lord. At this time, I'd like to bring uh, Reverend Randy Rowden to address you before we bring uh, Dr. Robbins back to the mic. Let's say praise the Lord. Well, praise the Lord. What a mighty word we heard today from Dr. Rufus Robbins. And I just happen to be here. I'm here next Sunday. Next Sunday, I'm here with, uh, with Reverend Terry Ellis to uh, help him and to be a part of the service. I just happen to be here today because God, God had an assignment for me to do. God had an assignment for me to do. Uh, you know, uh, Easter is approaching, well, we call it, we used to call it Easter. Resurrection Sunday is approaching mighty fast. Resurrection Sunday will be in three Sundays from now. I'm thinking this was the third Sunday and this is only the second Sunday because next, next Saturday, the 27th, is the last Saturday in this month. Now, I, can't, I got up here to say this because each Sunday, I'm, I'm, a, I'm the owner of the Oxford Way Men's Clothing Store, 6219 Shattuck Avenue. That's no shameless plug. I'm getting, I'm trying to get across, we need to support our black businesses. Yes. And the Oscar Wade Men's Clothing Store is a black business. Yes. Every, every Easter, I would give away suits, suiting up our boys. I would give away Easter suits to young boys. For the past five or six years, I've been giving away suits. 
but this coming Easter because of the pandemic has been difficult because there, there is no Easter parade, no Easter program for the kids in the church. Yes. And I asked the Lord, what are we going to do? Because retail industry depends on Easter Sunday, Resurrection Sunday. And the store has been hit so hard. I remember I, I have had, got a word from the Lord where it said that after, after Jesus had spoke in Luke, the fifth chapter, after Jesus had spoke, being in Simon's boat, he asked, he told Simon to launch out to the deep for a draw. And I said, Lord, what does that mean for me? I've taught all year long in 2021 trying to hold on to the store and I had not caught nothing. And the Lord said, launch out into the deep. In other words, try another way. So here's what I'm going to do. Instead of getting the kids Susie, here, I'm going to give 12 pastors. So when the church does open, the pastor can go back in his pool pit in a new suit. Uh, I'm going to give 12 pastors. 12 pastors. This Saturday, the 27th. 12 pastors. If you stop by the House of Wayman's Closed Door, 6219 Shattuck Avenue, because I know you suffered too through this pandemic. So if you would stop by the store, 6219 Shattuck Avenue, or give me a call, 510-922-9300, I'm giving away 12 suits to 12 pastors. If your church is big or small, it doesn't matter to me. As long as you're a pastor, you can receive a suit from the house away from this clothing store. That's launching out into the deep. I'm stepping out on faith. Even though I may not be able to satisfy a whole bunch of you, but to 12 when you show up next, this coming Saturday, I will suit you up. God bless you and God keep you. This Saturday. This Saturday. This Saturday. Saturday. The 21st. Or this Saturday, the 20th. Yeah. This Saturday, the 20th. And if, if not, don't show up on the 20th and the 27th. But we got to the end of the month to get this done. Bargain, you said, Argon. God keep you. We're going to we keep lifting up the name of Jesus Christ and believe in God for miracles in, in our lives. Amen. Amen. I do have kids suits too, so if you want to stop by and bring your kids, if I have their size, you're welcome to it. Now that's also to the pastors, those of you that if I have your size in the store, I can suit you up more than likely I do have your size. And the church said amen. amen. And the church said amen. amen. Thank God for another opportunity to be in the house of prayer. We know prayer changes things, and we know prayer will change conditions, and prayer has changed all of us. So uh, we want to thank Reverend Ellis, facilitating Brother Gibber, Brother Donald Taylor in the choir, and they sung a beautiful song with us today. We sing just each Sunday morning. We ask you to pray for them, that God will continue to give them strength. God will continue to bless them to render service unto us. Uh, I, I do want to say that this coming Thursday at six o'clock, uh, our church is asking all of you to pray and fast that can. Amen. Uh, if Amen. you can't do 12 hours, as long as your prayer is sincere for one hour, uh, two hours or whatever you can do. Amen. Because we know prayer and fasting goes together. Right. Let's pray and believe in faith yeah. that God can do all things. So, Thursday night at 6 o'clock, and after that, Reverend Ellis will come with a sermon yeah. to get us over the hump for throughout the week. Yeah. Good message. Good message. Amen. <laughs> amen. Let the church say amen. God has spoken. Let the church say amen. Right now, I'm still looking for one of those suits. And given the number, going to go over there. We will be one of the 12. Let the church. One more time, let's play it like we really mean. Let the church. Hit that one moment. 
more time. Let the church. Try to 